Welcome back. I hope you are doing great. As a part of the couple of previous lectures, we understood Hive architecture and its components. As a part of this lecture, we'll understand Hive data types. What are data types? Any idea? You know, as a part of the programming language, either C. C++, R, Python, or any programming languages for that matter. As a part of the programming language, you do some processing. When you process something, you need to have a way of holding the data you are processing. That is where data types come into picture. A data type is a classification of data which tells the compiler or interpreter how the programmer intends to use the data. There should be a specific way in which we need to tell compiler or interpreter how the programmer wants to use that particular data. That is where data type comes into picture. By the way, why do we need to have data types in Hive? As you know, Hive has a HQL, that is Hive query language. As a Hive query language, we do have different data types as a part of the Hive. Here, we are discussing about the primitive data types. What do you mean by primitive data types? Primitive data types are fundamental data types. We have Boolean, numeric, string, and timestamp as the primitive data types as a part of Hive. We do have complex data types in Hive, but we'll tackle that as a part of the upcoming lectures. We'll see all these primitive data types as a part of this lecture. What is Boolean? Boolean is one of the primitive data types which is named after British mathematician George Boole. As a part of Boolean, we specify either true or false. Whenever we want to filter something on a particular condition, we specify Boolean data types there. Either it will evaluate true or false. Whenever we have a yes or no questions, that is when we can use the booleans. Next primitive data type in Hive are numeric data types. Here we have integers or decimals as one of the numeric data types. In integers, we do have tiny int, small int, int, and big int. How are we classifying these things? It is based on how much of memory allocated to each one of them. But why do we need to classify within integers? Because whenever you define a data types, there is a memory allocated to that. For example, in case of tiny int, there'll be one byte allocation. In case of big int, there'll be eight bytes allocation. So if you have a requirement where your range is only between minus 128 to 128, then it doesn't make sense to define a big int. At the same time, when you need a big int where you need a range of minus 2 to the power of 63, 2 to the power of 63 minus 1, then if you define a 10 int, then it will throw an error. We'll not be able to store a big number as a part of the tiny int. So depending upon your requirement, we got to specify whether your data type in integers is a tiny int, small int, int, or big int. In decimals, we have float, we have double, we have decimal. Float takes four bytes, double takes eight bits. In the similar fashion, the way we discussed between the small int and int, 
depending upon our requirement we got to define whether our decimal data type need to be float or double we would have a decimal also with a precision of 10 comma 2 in string we have three types one is string the second one is char the third one is where char if you observe string are unbounded on the other hand where char is bounded what is that we'll discuss that in a moment string is an unbounded variable length character string on the other hand where char is a bounded variable length character string so character is a fixed length character string when you define a data type it can hold a string of variable length but when you define a where char you got to provide whether you want 45 or 100 how many characters you want as a part of your data type so it is bounded by that these days when you deal with the data where do you have the data where timestamp is not involved in most of the cases we do have a timestamp as a part of the timestamp we can store timestamp in integers floats or strings if you go for a integers within the timestamp we can store unix timestamp in nanoseconds in the floats we can go for a unix timestamps in seconds along with the decimal precision we do store the timestamp as the strings that is because in the big data world we usually store the timestamp as string just because it is easy for manipulate so whenever we want to store the data we store a timestamp as a string but whenever we want to go for a calculation that is when we convert the string into timestamp wonderful we understood important primitive data types as a part of the hive thank you mm -hmm.